There was an electric telegraph office in the main entrance of the great exhibition. We have replaced this with a video screen in our simulation. Select one of the buttons on the console below to play a video. The great exhibition of the works of industry of all nations opened on the 1st of May 1851. Incredibly, the contractors who constructed the building, Messrs Fox Henderson and Company, gained possession of the site in Hyde Park just nine months earlier, on the 30th of July 1850. Detailed drawings for the building had been completed just one month earlier, with a deadline of the 10th of July for contractors to tender for construction of the building. But this had been for a completely different and rather unpopular building design. Joseph Paxton's design for what became known as the Crystal Palace was a late and popular alternative. And so, on the 16th of July 1850, Fox and Henderson's tender for Mr. Paxton's design was accepted with one change. The arched roof of the transept was added to avoid the loss of some of the old elm trees. A royal commission headed by Prince Albert had been formed in January 1850 to organize an international exhibition, following a series of increasingly popular exhibitions of British manufacture by the Society of Arts in 1847, 1848 and 1849. These had been initiated in 1845 in response to a number of successful French national exhibitions. The first column of the building was raised on the 26th of September 1850, just 58 days after Fox and Henderson gained possession of the site. With the first four columns and trusses having been fixed, the structure was self-supporting, hence it became its own scaffolding. Conventional scaffolding was not required, allowing rapid progress. The greatest number of columns raised in one week was 310. Trusses were raised using a block and tackle and horsepower. The greatest number of men employed in one week was 2,260, and, being winter, work continued long after dark. Illumination was provided by bonfires. At one time, 12 large bonfires were lit to allow the men to work beyond midnight. By February 1851, the building was sufficiently complete to allow the exhibitors to start setting up their exhibits. The opening ceremony was Thursday the 1st of May 1851. Queen Victoria and Prince Albert arrived to trumpeters playing a fanfare. The national anthem was played, after which Prince Albert gave his opening address. This was followed by a performance of the Hallelujah Chorus. The royal party then undertook a procession along the full length of the building, after which Queen Victoria declared the exhibition open. The main entrance lobby of the exhibition, where you are watching this video, is approximately halfway along the south side of the building. Either side of the entrance lobby are ticket booths and turnstiles for day visitors, with seasoned ticket holders passing via desks in the centre. After passing through the large entrance doors, you will enter the transept with its magnificent arched roof which encloses the great elm trees. 
either side of the transept are sculptures, mostly by British sculptors, and in the middle is the Crystal Fountain. The west of the building is devoted to Britain and its colonies, the east to foreign exhibitors. There are some minor exceptions to this layout. For example, all moving machinery, British and foreign, is located in the northwest of the building to be as close as possible to the boiler house. Before you pass through these doors to start your own exploration of the exhibition, we will mention the exhibition's legacy. The exhibition made a profit. The Royal Commission of the Exhibition of 1851 was granted a supplemental charter to use this profit to increase the means of industrial education and extend the influence of science and art upon productive industry. Land was purchased which became the site of various museums, Imperial College, the Royal College of Art, the Royal College of Music and the Royal Albert Hall. It had been Prince Albert's intention that the Royal Commission should award scholarships, a scheme which continues to this day. The alumni of this scheme include 13 Nobel laureates. Perhaps two of the most famous names are the first, Ernest Rutherford, and most recent, Peter Higgs. Whilst you explore this virtual great exhibition, take note of the current location of extant exhibits. Do please visit these exhibits for yourself in the real world if you can. Sadly, some exhibits are now lost or inaccessible. They are presented here as cut-out billboard images and are marked with the legend, Sponsor, if you would like to sponsor creation of 3D models of any of these, please contact us. The first release of this simulation of the Great Exhibition of 1851 was released in September 2024, work having started in June 2023. It has been created by Keith Wood, who retired at the end of 2022 after nearly 40 years working on software for other people. Now he wanted a software project to create something for himself.